Hello, friends, members, subscribers, people who haven't subscribed yet. Welcome to North Coast Constrictors. My name is Carl and I'm from South Africa. I'd like to show you a couple of my ball pythons. It's the end of the week, Friday, 10th February. I've had a really shit week. <laughs> This, not for fun as far as ball pythons go, but just, just in general, my day-to-day -day job. This is my sanctuary. Like most of us who breed snakes, this is where we come to unwind, and we come to calm down from a hard day's work, even if you do get bitten a whole bunch of times. We produce some incredible snakes this season, and our last most recent clutch which we've just hatched out um i wanted to pull out for you the the exantics i'm not going to pull them all out because i'm just going to pull out the best otherwise the video would go on for too long so the pairing was a super pastel yellow belly exantic male paired to a female pastel Exantic pinstrap. I'm only going to pull out the snakes that hit pretty much all the genes. There's only two of them. The rest are all exantic, pastel exantic. Everything's pastel and everything's exantic. So this is one that hit that. We had two of the ones that had pinstrap. Okay, so this is one of them. Um, I have sexed them. I think this one's the, uh, I think this is the male. But I haven't marked it. I'll sex them again tomorrow. They've only just gone into their tubs tonight. Uh, last night. So here is one of these beautiful pinstripes. The one I'm going to pull out now loves to bite. I'm not sure, I'm not convinced yet. I may need two or three more, two sheds more maybe to see if this is the all gene snake, if this is the super pastel yellow belly. Gen uh, exantic pinstrap. I don't know, maybe you guys can help me out with that. It's the only thing that's kind of giving it away for me is the uh, her head. It is looking quite white, so yeah. It's definitely... Oh, someone's making a break. Um, but anyway. So guys, yeah, th those are two of the hatchlings that we, we hatched out. Uh, and then the rest are pastel exantics. And pastel exantic, um, uh, some with yellow belly and some super pastels. I'm not, I'm not going to pull them out. Um, what I do want to pull out and do an update for you are a couple of females that I produced this season, which are absolute standouts for me. I'm going to start off here with a um, blackhead red gene harpo female. She is looking incredible. She's stunning. I know one of the top readers in South Africa and uh, now I consider a very good friend and mentor. Absolutely loves the snake and I think he would want it in his collection. So blackhead red gene, harpo, female, visual. And guys, these, these are the colors. You can see the red gene, uh, clearly these rusty colors. You can also see that uh, the, this white blushing that goes up the sides of the alien heads and there's more more keyholes as opposed to alien heads so and then obviously the the full-on black head so she's she is one of our one of our beautiful babies that we produced this year and I want to pull out another one here which is my absolute <clears throat> she's my pride and joy out of my hatching so far this year um, she's a firefly clown, but there is another gene in her. We have to wait two or three, two years, two and a half years to breed her, to prove her out. We have got five of these clowns, visual clowns, sorry, four of them are visual, five is not a visual. The gene in question, I've said it before, guys, I think we've got lace. Um... If it's not lace, it's Trojan or Mandarin. It, it, it's, it's, an it's a brightening gene, it's an enhancing gene. There's no way that this is just a firefly clown. 
It's been, e even my harshest critics in the beginning when I claimed to have the gene have now started to come around uh, top, top breeders and say, yeah, we, we think you may have you've got lace, which is kind of difficult for them to do because they are very much working on the lace project and there is uh, very few guys in South Africa that are working on lace. Um, but what one of the guys did tell me is that if you don't have lace, you've probably got Mandarin or Trojan. Um, and if I don't have any of those, then we've got a completely new gene. But this um, hatchling, the, the, uh, where we discovered the gene, was in the sire. The, the, the sire actually carried the lace gene, what, what we think is the lace gene, or the, the Dinka gene. Okay, guys, it's, it's like I have to call it Dinka until I prove out white lace. It's just going to have to be one of those things. I mean, I can believe as much as I want that I've got lace. Um, but until I prove white lace, which is super lace, I really don't have a leg to stand on, do I? Um, so, oh, might as well just give her a, a new, a new uh, piece of paper. She's had a little wee. I don't necessarily scrub down with F10 for a little wee like that because, you know, the snakes are... Uh, they like their scents, uh, they live in burrows and their smells and um, whatever, it's what they're accustomed to, even their own urine. So unless it's really, really fouled or whatever, and you know, I use this Colton paper, it's just folded over. If it's just a little bit of pee inside there, I just take it out and put a fresh one over and the scent is still inside there and she feels comfortable and she feels safe. I'm gonna put out another boy here. Um, he might be close on going into shed. This is my star boy this year. This is a fire blade, uh, what we believe to be a lace clown. Uh, as I say, I have to call it a dinker project for now because um, until I've proved super lace or white lace, um, it's just a guessing game right now. Fortunately, lace is an incomplete dominant gene, so you only need one copy of the gene. But uh, I have done, it's now been, you know, a month and a bit of research, and uh, I can't see anything in these snakes, these, this particular clutch that is telling me that it's not lace. But if it isn't, it isn't, guys, and it's, and it's, 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 yeah, you know, it won't be cool, but, but what's for sure is that there is another gene in here. I've even been told by one of, you know, the most respected breeders in South Africa, amongst others, that it could be Trojan or even Mandarin if it's not lace, and if it's neither of those, then I've made, uh, created inadvertently a whole new gene, okay, a new, a new gene. Uh, but the thing is, we, we'll have to see, because what's going to happen is this male is going to breed back to um, another female, obviously, that doesn't have fire, in, uh, because this is a fire blade. I don't want to breed fire to fire, because you can get a white snake, super fire is white. So he's going to go to one of the females that uh, has no fire in her. Um... And then we're going to be breeding, here we have a, a straight pastel, pastel clown, but it's, in our opinion, it's a pastel lace clown, and this is a male. And this boy, because uh, uh, he doesn't have fire uh, in him, and we've got two of these. Uh, uh, when he comes of age, uh, he's breeding to her. So we're going to take a pastel lace clown and we're going to breed it to a firefly lace clown and we're going to hopefully get super pastel white lace clowns. Wouldn't that be something? Three years, guys. That's what it's going to take. Three years. Uh, sorry about me disappearing off camera every now and then. Um, guys, that's about it, uh, you know, 10 minutes into the video, I want to pull out 
a couple more hatchlings. I've got like a, like my hatching rack is full now. We've we've got we've we've got a ton um, of 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 great babies. I I did feed. In fact, there is one here. Pasta Alexantic Pod, she's looking stunning. This is one of uh, this is one of my all-time favorite snakes. Um, she's an absolute stunner. Oh yes, I am gonna do a video. I'm gonna show you what we produce, what we hatch out. I bought this female. This is an acquisition. And I bought her, uh, I am working on the Exantic Pod project, but the reason why I bought this snake is because I produced Exantic Pods this season, but without pastel. And I think you already know how I feel about pastel in pod, uh, exantic. So this is an exantic pastel female, which has uh, got big plans for the future. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, two exantic pods that are hatched out uh, and they had their first sheds. And here's one of them. Uh, this is a male, uh, straight exantic pod, no pastel, no fire, nothing in him. It's just a double recessive exantic pod. I think he's an absolute stunner, a winner, beautiful, beautiful snake. Um, he's going to do very, very well for us in the future. All of the double recessive visuals are holdbacks. I'm going to pull out his sister. We hit another one. Uh, and guys, by the way, this was a 100% double head pairing to 100% double head pairing. So both both the snakes, both the Sire and the Dame were not visuals. They were 100% hit Desert Ghost. Sorry, 100% hit Exantic, 100% hit Pod. And uh, we, we produced this. We got two visuals out of that clutch. Um, the rest were Exantic, 66% uh, hit Pod. And we didn't, uh, and then we got two that were 66% double hit, exantic part. So, but we hit, they did hit two visuals and one male and one female, both of them are holdbacks. And um, I just love the markings on her. She's, she's stunner. Uh, we'll breed him next year. We've got the perfect females to breed him to. And he is also... Um, He's a sibling now. He's the younger brother of one that we produced two years ago. Well, a friend of mine produced him. Uh, unfortunately, he only locked with one female this year. This is a grown-up version. He's two years old. You can see even though he's exantic pied, uh, he has got no pastel in him. He's now an adult proven breeder. He will be breeding. He has not dulled out, funny enough, a, a little bit, for sure. There's a little bit of browning in there. But in general, he's actually kept his blacks and grays pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with this snake. Um, when I got him, he was still too small to breed. I did try and get him up to breeding weight and size last year. I got him just on the 800 gram mark. I did pair him up to three females. Uh, two of them were double hit, 100% hit exantic pods. He did not lock with them. They wouldn't allow it. They were well over three and a half thousand grams. And then I paired him to an exantic, a pastel exantic, and we got um, <laughs> we got ten eggs. Eight were viable. Two were slugs, and then only one survived. So, and what we got there was a, a visual exantic 100% hit, 100% hit pod. Uh, out of, out of uh, 10 eggs, we only had one that survived, which was quite unfortunate. But that boy there is going, uh, we've got another pod 100%, 66% plus hit exantic. We've also got pastel pod 100% hit exantics. Males and females, we've got a cracker season coming up, guys. 2023 is going to be a winner. 2024 is going to be even off the charts. Um, I wish I could put out all my snakes for you guys, but I want to wrap up this video. Just thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to try and mix it up a little bit. I'm going to try and choose some topics that are going to be interesting. I do want to focus on some topics for new ball python breeders. Guys that are just starting out. Guys that are just going into their first season or just going into their second season. 
Um, I've got far too many hatchlings to pull out. I can't show you them all. I'd love to show you them all. Guys, if you want to see my snakes, please follow my Instagram page. It is linked below here. Um, North Coast Constrictors, North Coast underscore Constrictors. Go and search in you, uh, Instagram for that. Click on it, follow us. You'll see a lot of my snakes. I'm uh, doing almost daily or every second day, I'm posting pictures of our snakes. Updates on hatchlings, clutches, you know, whatever we've got. If we get a new snake into the collection, it's all there. If, if you want to go through and have a look at my entire collection, I think I've got pretty much every single snake on my collection. Um, I'm not going to lie, and uh, I have got some snakes in my collection. There's probably about 10 in my collection, which are top secrets. Um, nobody knows the, that I've got them except from the guys that I bought them from. Um, they are a secret for a reason. They are because I want to be... Uh, one of the first to breed if I, if I pull if I pull th these combinations off I'll be one of two breeders doing it um, and uh, there's a couple of other ones in there that I've, I've I've got a couple of aces up my sleeve and you know it's nice I've, I've always wanted to have a an attitude of transparency with my videos and I like to show people what they're buying like if you're gonna watch my videos and you want to buy a snake from me you can always connect the dots and trace back I play open cards and say he has the male he has the female the, but the things that I am gonna keep a secret are projects that are, that I think that very very few people are working on or sleeping on and I see huge potential with them and you know I'm not I'm gonna give away trade secrets you know I'm still fairly new in the industry and I'm learning a lot and I'm learning that supply and demand is key in this industry if you produce too much of something the value of the snake is gonna drop so I have got about 10 snakes in my collection which are incredibly high-end they are double recessives mixed with a whole bunch of other genes and we even looking at some triple recessive possibilities there um they will not never be on camera until the day that they uh, the females have laid eggs and then i will show people the adults it's so unfortunately um i think everybody every even justin kabalka and brian barcheck and kevin mccurley and or uh, Miguel Marquez, I think that's what his name is from Always Evolving. If I've butchered the name, I apologize. Um, all of the guys that are top, top breeders, um, they don't always show their best snakes. They, they, keep, they keep those. I didn't have that much to show last year. Um, and even this year, in the beginning, I really didn't have that much to show. I mean, last year, the year before. And now I've actually started to build up quite a... Uh, a valuable collection and I've, I've I've done some investments in snakes that are when they do not if when they do produce the hatchlings that I know that they're going to produce because one I have spent the money and two I have bought from the best breeders obviously they have already produced the visuals of these but they are so high-end and so sought after that they are holdbacks and they're still busy breeding those snakes so i managed to get my hands on a couple from different guys and i've got one more snake that is due to come into the collection i've had to stop myself dead in my tracks now of spending money i've spent a lot of money in the last 18 months getting my collection to where it is I do now feel, I mean, you can always have another snake. As a snake breeder, there's always that one that you're going to say, oh, I have to have that in my collection. You've got to be disciplined, or I have to personally be disciplined enough to say, enough is enough. I've got what I need. I have produced some incredible snakes for beautiful breeding projects. We're talking about the Grail project. We're talking about Dreamsicle. We're talking about Holy Grail projects. We are and those are the ones that I've shown those are the ones that I'm talking about those are the hatchings that I've shown 
uh, where I've got Lavender Albino 100% Head Pods and Pod 100% Head Lavender Albinos. And now we're throwing Clown into that, we're throwing Black Pastel into that, especially with the Lavender Albinos. Uh, black pastel lavender albino clowns, black pastel lavender albino pods. We we've got a, we've got a lot going on. Those are going to be some beautiful, beautiful snakes. Um, so th those I'm quite happy to talk about. I have produced tons of the of of not those snakes because those will be the visuals when I breed the hatchings that I've got in the racks that are out of the camera sight. Those snakes, the males, I will be breeding to other females next year because the males will be 18 months old and way up to size. And I'll be pairing them with whatever the visuals are of them. If they have visual pods, I'll be pairing a visual pod, 100% lavender albino. I'll be pairing them with lavender albino that have got maybe 66% head pod or pods that are, you know, head for, for lavender albino. Things like that, you know, we've got, we got to put them to work. We've got to make sure that we, make sure that we are getting visual recessives every single time on at, le on at least one of the recessives. Um, so we have really, really got some beautiful stuff on. And then I have got a couple of projects that I... If you look at the snakes now on their own, you would think, ah, that's just, that's average. But I've... In my weird scientific brain that doesn't ever ever switch off, thought about adding genetics to cert to some particular genes that I'm working on that is very appealing to me, guys. This is a very very important bit of advice that I can give you. Don't just produce because, yes, produce snakes that you know sell, but also produce snakes that you think are beautiful and you would buy yourself. Everything's visual with the ball pythons. I've seen snakes that are worth hundreds of thousands of rands. I would not buy them. I'm telling you right now, unless I see something different with monsoon and sunset, I will not buy a sunset or a monsoon. I have seen guys breeding them with the Mojave monsoon and whatever. I still do not see enough change or radical differences in pattern and and whatever to make me jump out of my skin and go fuck i'm going to spend my money on that yes i want to get into the sunset project yes i want to get into the monsoon project but everyone's losing their shit over monsoon and sunset and the reason why is simple supply and demand visually appealing no i think a fucking monsoon is not a beautiful snake and you're trying to combine it with all these other genes. Maybe someone somewhere along the line is going to pair a monsoon with a, some kind of other recessive or another snake that makes that snake do something wild. And when it happens, boom, well done. I'm going to take my hat off to the lake and then I'll look into it. Sunset is the same. I believe it's a beautiful, I prefer sunset to monsoon. Now, I'm Guys, please, if you're breeding sunset and you're breeding monsoon, I'm not having a personal dig at you. I'm giving you my personal opinion on what is visually appealing to me, okay? I will not buy a snake just because it's valuable in somebody else's eyes. I'm looking at snakes like calico and sugar, which I think are visually appealing to me, okay? I think they are stunning snakes, but I am throwing in genes there that are going to fucking take pastel, sugar, Calico, fire, calico, calico and sugar, the big debate whether it's the same gene or not the same gene. I'm still sitting on the fence. But I'm throwing things into there. I'm working heavy on that project. I'm, going, I'm throwing in a lot of other genes there that are going to do some wild things with the calico project, okay? Yes, I'm going to be putting Desert Ghost into it. Fuck it, that's a given. Desert Ghost is like, if you don't put Desert Ghost into it, it's, you know, crazy. And yes, if I've got lace, I'm putting lace into it. But that's not even the projects that I'm keeping a secret. Those are the ones that I'm openly talking about. That, those are three years down the line. Guys, I've rambled on enough, 25 minutes nearly. Friday afternoon, I think I'm going to go and sit and chill and relax and get ready tomorrow is saturday and that means rodent facility cleaning day my worst day of the week going to the rodent facility and cleaning all the rodent racks out i hate it um but i enjoy my time in my snake room and the, these little creepies these little slithery barty wonderful 
love hate relationship animals that are standing behind me here. This is this is where this is where it all happens, and this is kind of like where I can forget about my day to day job and the real problems of the world and kind of get lost up in my snakes and the genetics and I can daydream about all the possibilities of the morphs and different combinations if we breed that to that and what will I get and it's it's just like a never ending story it's like Alice jumping down the rabbit hole possibilities are endless with ball pythons and that's why I love them so much guys that's it over and out from me have a wonderful weekend please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already We'll see you on the next video.